Now that we've made our first two graphs, let's move on and make an animated bar graph. Let's make our new composition, composition, new composition, and this will have the same settings as our previous two graphs, but let's call this bar graph. Hit OK. And for this, we're going to use the pen tool to draw our graph lines. So a bar graph, as we know, consists of the basic two axis graph and then a series of bars indicating different values. So let's create our original bars. It doesn't matter whether you have fill or stroke. Let's go ahead and just draw a right angle. Click once, hold shift to draw a perfectly straight line, click again, continue to hold shift, and click a third time. Now if you have fill on like I do, that's not what we want. We want a stroke. So let's turn off our fill by clicking the word and clicking the red line. And then let's turn on a stroke by clicking the color box and I'm gonna make this our yellow. I'll click OK. I'm gonna thin this out a little bit. 50 is too thick. I'm gonna go in half and type in 25. And let's give this some personality. Right now our caps are flat. So let's come down to our shape layer one. Let's start by renaming this. We'll call this graph line. Toggle it down. Toggle down contents. Toggle down shape one. And then toggle down stroke one. Under the stroke pull down, we have several options here. I'm worried about the line cap. It defaults to butt cap, which is just a flat cap. We wanna change this to round cap. It gives it some nice character round edges. Good for me. Let's toggle up stroke one, zoom back out. And now we have our nice line graphs. Now, before we keep going, let's add a drop shadow so it mirrors the other graphs we've been making. Let's come over to our effects and presets panel. I'll start typing in drop shadow. I'll double click drop shadow. And I will imitate what we've done before. 135 for the degrees, a distance of around 15 to 20, and a nice soft shadow. Good. Now let's create our bars. Let's go up to layer. Let's make a new shape layer. Get out your rectangle tool. And again, we'll worry about fill and stroke in a second. And let's just draw a very tall bar. And let's come up to our stroke values and let's turn off the stroke. And let's fill this with our blue. And let's rename this bar one. Now let's get out our pan behind tool because what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna animate this rectangle to scale up and down on its Y axis. So let's get out our pan behind tool and let's change the anchor point for our bar to be the bottom center. And I'll hold control or command on the keyboard to snap that to center. And let's drag bar beneath our graph line. That way it tidies up the edge down here at the bottom. With bar one selected, Click S on the keyboard to bring up scale, and let's unlink our X and Y parameters. We want to work with the Y parameter only, which is the second set of numbers. And now you can see how we're going to bring this to life. So if we bring this to zero, this is a good starting point. Let's click our stopwatch for scale, and let's bring this over to around two and a half seconds, and let's increase this back to 100. But what's nice is this is now our visualization. So this is if the data point asked for 100%. We could very easily just make this 30% or 25%. And now we have an accurate representation because as we make multiple bars, they'll share the same percentages. So let's start this first one at 25% and we'll increase them incrementally as we make them. So if I start my loop point and I play this back, it's not gonna be terribly exciting. It's literally a growing bar over the course of two and a half seconds. Let's give it some ease. Let's select the last keyframe and hit F9 on the keyboard to add some ease. Then come to the graph editor and let's increase the influence handle. Good. Let's see what that does. 
a little long. I'm gonna drag the key frames closer to each other. Yeah, it's nice. Good, so now we've made our first bar, we don't have to redraw anything. We just have to duplicate bar one. And then, depending on its value, we'll just change the scale percentage for the last keyframe. So let's select bar one and hit Control D or Command D to duplicate it. It makes bar two. I'll hit U on the keyboard to unfold that. And now we have to reposition this. Well, I wanna make sure that we're positioning these in equal increments around the graph. We could do this one of two ways. We could bring up the grid by going to view in the menu bar and hitting show grid. This allows us now to line things up as I move bar two. I can even move bar one to make sure that we're on equal footings. So I'll start them on the thick line there. And then the, oops, control Z. Bar two, I'd start on the next thick line. So now every thick line will have a new bar graph. That works. Let me turn off the grid by going to view and unchecking show grid. We can also type in plus and minus numbers for the position of every layer we have. This is something I haven't covered just yet. So if I click on bar two and hit P on the keyboard to bring up position, I can actually plus and minus the data here. So if I wanna change the position by say 300 pixels, I could click on the X number here and hit on my keyboard plus 300 and hit enter. Check it out, it moves it over 300 pixels exactly and it adds it for us. So we could do that both ways. We could use the grid and visually align it or if we really liked that number precision, we could type in exactly what distance we needed it. I'm gonna use the grid, it's a little bit faster and I don't like doing math. So I'm gonna go up to view and select show grid. So for bar two now, I'm gonna hit S on the keyboard to bring back my scale. I wanna both stagger this by selecting both keyframes and dragging it down field a bit, as well as changing the last parameter to be something different. I wanna increase these incrementally by 25, so I'm gonna hit 50 here. There we go. So now, if we play this back, very nice. Let's continue the process twice more. Let's select bar two and duplicate to bar three. Hit U. Let's again stagger these and then change the last keyframe. Select my last keyframe, and I'm gonna make this 75. Now let's drag it over to its next grid marker, right about here. And one last time, select bar three, duplicate, hit U, stagger the keyframes, change the last value to be 100, and then drag it to the next grid line. I'm holding shift as I drag so I don't accidentally move it up and down. So now if I play this back, I'll turn off my grid, view, show grid, and I will play this back. A beautiful eased bar graph. Again, all it's missing is some numbers and some words, but we'll add that in a later tutorial. The last thing I wanna do is add our four color gradient from our previous charts. But here's what's fun. If we copy and paste the previous four color gradient from say our graph base on our pie graph composition, let's select it, control C to copy it, jump back over to our bar graph. If we select all of our bars by selecting one, holding shift, and then selecting the last one, and we paste this four color gradient, ah, it gives the same gradient with the same starting point over all four bars. So it actually creates a really nice color scheme. So now if I play this back, we have our drop shadowed lines and our four color gradient bars with ease. So 
The last thing to do is to come to our All Charts composition, come back to our project panel, and drag our newly created bar graph comp into it and scale it down. So far so good, we've created three really awesome visualizations of data and graphs using basic shapes and some new effects along the way. Our last graph is gonna be a line graph and we'll learn some new effects to help us with that one too. See you there.